It is advisable to study the appropriate essential anatomy as outlined in the primer of regional anesthesia anatomy before studying the continuous axillary nerve block. Like the continuous infraclavicular block, the catheter is situated on a specific peripheral nerve in the case of the continuous axillary block. This nerve is likely to be the only nerve that will be blocked while the relatively small volume of local anesthetic agent is infused. This has proven to be disappointing in clinical practice. For wrist and elbow surgery, the continuous cervical perivertebral block, as described elsewhere in this production with its involvement of all the roots of the brachial plexus, is probably a better choice than the continuous interscalene, continuous infraclavicular, and continuous axillary blocks for shoulder, wrist, and elbow surgery. Remember that all the peripheral nerves to the arm and forearm need to be blocked for elbow and wrist surgery. All local anesthetic agents have been used for this block, but the preference of this author is to use 15 to 40 milliliters of ropivacaine, 0.5 to 0.75 percent, as an initial bolus and to follow this up with 5 to 10 milliliters per hour of an infusion of ropivacaine, 0.2 percent. It is essential to allow for relatively large patient-controlled boluses of 10 to 15 milliliters every 60 minutes to capture unblocked peripheral nerves in the post-operative period should this become necessary. The patient is positioned supine with the shoulder joint abducted and the elbow flexed. The skin and subcutaneous tissue and intended path of the tunneling of the catheter are anesthetized after skin preparation and covering of the area with a sterile fenestrated transparent drape. The insulated 17 or 18 gauge TUI needle attached to a nerve stimulator set to a current output of 1 to 2 milliamps, a frequency of 2 hertz, and a pulse width of 200 to 300 microseconds enters the skin next to the axillary artery and is directed in a cephalid direction. In this demonstration, the musculocutaneous nerve is first encountered and then the ulnar nerve. The needle is held steady and the stylet removed after the nerve stimulator output has been turned down to approximately 0.3 to 0.5 milliamps. This guarantees accurate needle placement, but not accurate catheter placement. When the appropriate branch of the brachial plexus is identified, the ulnar nerve in this case, the nerve stimulator output is turned down, which confirms accurate needle placement. It is important not to inject any conductive fluids like local anesthetic agent or normal saline through the needle at this point, since this will serve to make the stimulating catheter placement impossible. The notion of opening up the space is not based on scientific or anatomic fact. In real live tissue, this only infiltrates the tissue and causes local tissue edema. The nerve stimulator is now set to 0.5 to 1 milliamps and attached to the proximal end of the catheter. Note the broad black mark on the catheter, which indicates that the catheter tip is now situated at the tip of the needle. The catheter is advanced beyond the needle tip, and if the motor response disappears, it simply means that the catheter tip is moving away from the nerve. Withdraw the catheter tip carefully to inside the needle shaft Make a small adjustment to the needle, such as turning it clockwise or counterclockwise, or advancing or withdrawing it slightly, as in this recording. Repeat this maneuver as many times as is necessary until the motor response remains constant during catheter advancement. Advance the catheter for 3 to 5 centimeters beyond the needle tip, but not more than 5 centimeters. This recording shows the catheter placement from another angle. The catheter is fed towards the cord level of the brachial plexus. The closer the catheter tip is to the cords or divisions of the brachial plexus, the better the chances of a successful continuous block. The needle is removed without disturbing the catheter position. A special tunneling device can be used to tunnel the catheter subcutaneously. The TUI needle and its stylet can also be used as illustrated elsewhere in this production. Tunneling is essential to prevent catheter dislodgement. The skin bridge may be important for short to midterm catheter use since this facilitates easy catheter removal. 
Catheter leakage is, however, common if a skin bridge is used, and tunneling without leaving a skin bridge may be considered. The snap lock is attached to the catheter, and the nerve stimulator set to an output of 0 milliamps is attached to the snap lock. The nerve stimulator output is slowly turned up until a muscle twitch can just be seen. Local anesthetic agent or any conducting fluids, such as normal saline, as in this instance, can now be injected, and the muscle twitches will immediately stop after the injection starts. This constitutes a positive Raj test, which gives further assurance that the secondary block to the particular peripheral nerve will be successful. Catheter removal is after the patient does not require the continuous nerve block any longer and after full sensation has returned to the limb. Any radiating pain during catheter removal may indicate that the catheter has coiled around a nerve or cord, and this should be managed with utmost care. Remove the catheter by stabilizing the proximal part and first removing the distal part of the catheter from the skin bridge. Once this is done, keep the distal part sterile and remove the rest of the catheter.